Hi, my name is Leonie and today I'm going to present our deep learning based neuroimaging pipeline named FastSurfer. As many of you may know, the problem with traditional neuroimaging pipelines, like for example FreeSurfer, is that they take a lot of time to process a single MRI volume. This is in part due to the fact they include many different pre-processing steps, like for example brain extraction, intensity normalization, as well as all the different steps that are necessary to get um, good surfaces. And some of these steps are actually quite time intensive. As such, just to generate the volumetric labeling of the subcortical structures only takes up to two to three hours. And a full brain parcellation, which then also includes the gyro labels, will need nearly double the time, so um, up to four to eight hours. And the idea behind FastSurfer is to use deep learning tools to speed up this process and then get a full FreeSurfer output in a fraction of the time. And in order to do this, we use an advanced deep learning architecture called FastSurfer CNN to create a whole brain segmentation into 95 classes in less than a minute, which basically mimics FreeSurfer's anatomical segmentation and cortical parcellation. And then building upon this high quality segmentation, we generate a full FreeSurfer output, including cortical surface reconstruction, mapping of cortical labels, and traditional point-wise and RI thickness analysis in approximately 60 minutes. FastSurfer CNN is composed of three fully convolutional neural networks operating on coronal, axial, and sagittal 2D slice decks and a final view aggregation stage. Within each FCNN, we incorporate local and global competition via competitive dense blocks that are depicted down here and competitive skip pathways. So we use max out at the end of each long range skip connection, as well as multi-slice information aggregation uh, by using a seven channel input. And these modifications specifically tailor network performance towards the accurate recognition of both cortical and subcortical structures, as can be seen in our accuracy analysis. So here we compare the dice score as well as the Hausdorff distance for um, the cortical and the subcortical structures. The cortical is always on top. And compared to other deep learning architectures, FastSurfer CNN, which is depicted in dark blue, reaches a higher die score both for the cortical as well as the subcortical structures and a lower average Hausdorff distance again for both the cortical as well as the subcortical structures. And this is also with respect to FreeSurfer as a reference, which is depicted here on the left for multiple data sets as well as a manual standard um, here on the right. On average, fast server CNN reaches a dice of 87 for FreeSurfer and 82.1 with respect to Mindboggle as a reference. The average Hausdorff distance is 0.196 with respect to FreeSurfer and 0.346 with respect to Mindboggle. So overall, we see that FastSurfer CNN outperforms other deep learning architectures by a significant margin, both with respect to FreeSurfer as a reference and the manual standard, and also that it generalizes quite well across um, a number of different data sets, which include different disease states, um, different age groups, as well as different scanner types already. One additional advantage of using FastSurfer CNN compared to a standard FreeSurfer run is that um, because uh, segmentation is generated just based on the MRI volume input, um, many steps that are used in the traditional FreeSurfer can all have become obsolete, such as skull tripping and nonlinear atlas registration, which already results in a speed up of the entire pipeline. In addition, within Reconserve, we introduce an alternative to FreeSurfer's traditional iterative spherical inflation process, which is depicted here at the top. And we precisely perform a one-shot spectral embedding using the first three non-constant eigenfunctions of the Laplace Beltrami operator, which are shown here, to parameterize the surface smoothly. 
so you can see the parameterization here. And then we quickly generate the final spherical map by scaling the 3D spectral embedding vector um, to unit lengths, which then results in our sphere. And this process in turn reduces self-foldings and results in a slightly faster topology pixel. In order to ensure that FastSurfer is at a whole not only accurate but also sensitive and reliable method and to ensure its usefulness to the neuroimaging community, we extensively validated our pipeline with respect to three main aspects. And that is one, how well does the pipeline generalize to unseen cases, for example, different data sets, age ranges, disease states, vendors, and so on which relates to the topic of generalizability. Second, how well does the pipeline reproduce the results between scans with minimal anatomical variations? So for example, if the same subject is scanned twice within a short time frame, which relates to a reliability of a method. And third, how well does the pipeline detect significant effects in the data? So for example, changes or differences associated with disease states or aging effects which relates to the sensitivity of a method. We will now inspect these three aspects to judge fast surface performance in comparison to FreeSurfer. So first off, we used subjects from ATNI to determine how well fast surfer generalizes to unseen cases of different disease states, shown here on the left, so the nice similarity score, and manufacturers here on the right, with respect to FreeSurfer. The segmentations of both methods, FastSurfer and FreeSurfer, closely resemble each other, as can be seen by the high dial score for the subcortical as well as the um, cortical structures. The segmentations deviate a bit more for extreme cases like the uh, Alzheimer patients, which is not necessarily a quality deficit, but uh, might actually be due to noisy data, increased motions in these patients, or also blurring of the white gray matter border. And overall, we can still say that both methods stay relatively similar to one another, and we have a good generalization across disease states and scanners for fast surfer. In the second analysis, we use the OASIS-1 test-retest component to calculate the intra-class correlation coefficient, so the ICC, which is an estimate of the agreement between results of scans with minimal anatomical variation. And we can see here the results for FreeSurfer on the left, and on the right we have FastSurfer, and you can see that for FastSurfer we get larger areas with a higher ICC, so light blue values compared to FreeSurfer. And in addition, we see that free FastSurfer is highly reliable with a close agreement between the cortical sickness measurements across the entire cortex. So there's basically no area that is not blue in this case. So um, the entire cortex has an ICC of above 0.8. Finally, we use the cross-sectional part of OASIS um, to determine how well FastSurfer is capable of reproducing known disease effects in a group study between control and dementia patients, um, such as, for example, cortical atrophy, ventricular dilation, or atrophy of certain subcortical structures, like, for example, the hippocampus. And with FastSurfer, we are actually indeed able to find um, reduced cortical thickness in regions associated with dementia, as can be seen here, um, indicated by the p-value with high sensitivity, for example, in the temporal lobe. And that also we have an uh, increased sensitivity relative to, relatively to free surfer again. Uh, the same is true for the um, subcortical volume differences in this case. Here, um, fast surfer um, with darker colors also reaches uh, lower p-value, which is indicated here by a larger bar, for differences between the amygdala hippocampus and thalamus, which are basically decreased in dementia patients compared to controls, as well as ventricles, which are enlarged. And again, we see that um, fast surfer has an increased sensitivity compared to free surfer. So in total, we are able to robustly reproduce known disease effects in dementia patients 
which is quite nice. Overall, we could show that FastSurfer is indeed not only an accurate tool, but also reliable, sensitive and generalized as well to unseen cases, and is as such hopefully of use to many of you. That was my talk. Thank you for your attention. And of course, um, I would like to thank all the people who made this work possible, especially my fellow co-authors, Martin Reuter, Salish Congeti, Santiago Estrada, Kirsten Diaz and Bruce Fischel, as well as the BNBF for um, our funding. And in case you would like to know more about FastSurfer, you can check out our archive paper, which uh, the link is given here. And follow us on Twitter at DeepMILab for the code release, which will be done on our GitHub. In addition, we have some open positions at our lab, so um, if you're interested, come and visit our lab page, deepinai.org.